All right. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, our proposal, proposal is to have a common Git repository for hosting boot critical firmwares. So, uh, let me. Okay. So, quick intro. Uh, I'm Vignesh. Uh, this is Nishan, my colleague. Uh, and, you know, we maintain the uh, TI SK3 family of SOCs in uh, TI mainline, among other things. So, uh, let's let's get started. Uh, sorry. Uh, what's the problem that we are trying to address here, right? So, we want to be able to build a system uh, completely from open components, open so I mean, uh, embedded system based on just public repositories without you know kinding to rely on any vendor specific. Uh, trees or websites, so, uh, and why is this uh, important? Because we want to be able to support different distros out there uh, and, you know, with full system uh, in, in place. Uh, we, I mean, there are many kernel drivers which basically re rely on certain firmwares to be loaded to get uh, different functionality of the system. Uh, so we, such firmwares are today hosted in Linux firmware repository, for example, right? So and distros just use that to basically um, uh, clone that repository and as part of the build system, it'll, they'll just include the firmware and create the full file systems. Uh, but there isn't any such locations or a common location where boot critical firmware can be hosted. Uh, so that's, that's the problem that we are trying to address. Um, so yeah. Uh, what you have seen is there are like broadly three categories of firmware that basically gets used within the bootloader uh, stage of the boot process essentially, right? So there are IP firmware which which basically enable certain boot peripherals like TDR firmware uh, for LPDDR4, 5 and later on basically, uh, or it can be served as five firmware basically, right? So uh, or and there are firmware that kind of run before the open component of the boots run before, let's say, U boot or an SPL stage, or along with the stage, for example, an uh, ARM SCP firmware equivalent that may be a proprietary implementation of the device management firmware that that is part of the vendor's uh, uh, BSP. Uh, and there is uh, security enclave firmware, uh, which basically provide the crypto cryptographic services or uh, root of trust and so forth. So these firmware are also something that kind of get loaded during the boot process itself and are part of the are are required to get the bootloader up and running as well. Um, right. So uh, we, we, we're just going to take an example and show, for example. Uh, uh, you may have heard about uh, the TI Beagle Play platform, which is a 64-bit variant of uh, Beagle Bone. Um, so what we have is a distro which can be built for the Beagle Play platform based on Pokey, Ambien, or you know any such build route, etc. So all the source that you require for from the kernel point of view is completely in Linux kernel, and we use U-boot as the bootloader, and the source is there, uh, but Crucially, it depends on two firmwares that are required to boot up. One is the device management firmware, which provides the power management related services, uh, ARM SCP, uh, TI equivalent ARM, of ARM SCP protocol, the uh, SEMI equivalent. And there is a security firmware, which is TI foundational security component. So these two are currently hosted in a you know, TI repository, which needs to be downloaded and built as part of your boot build process. Um, there, there is there's equivalence in other build flow as well. For example, the bottom left is a snapshot from NXP board build, build process, which essentially has uh, DDR firmware and, and a security container as well. Uh, on the right, it's uh, Rockchip SOC, and they kind of have a very similar process as well. So it's, it's kind of common in a lot of embedded uh, ecosystem boards and probably even in uh, PC word to have such um, uh, dependency on boot firmware being present and needing to build them as part of the boot boot process itself. Okay, so okay, so so what's the proposal? What we want to do exactly is to basically have a common 
repository for boot critical firmwares that are along the lines of uh, Linux firmware. So just host the you know binaries for uh, that are not available in the source format. You know. Uh, uh, and which are very difficult to build offline because of dependencies on vendor toolchain or whatever it is, right? So, uh, and also serve as a place where you have clear licensing regarding how the binary redistributions can happen, which is which is one good thing that you get when you try to look at Linux firmware repository, the licensing files are included. You don't have the confusion of where the binary came for or how, how it's distribute, distributable or not, right? So essentially, um, so we we started our mail chain on the U-boot list to start start this conversation. So I have the links as part of the reference in in, in this presentation. So uh, there were feedback and an act from U-boot custodian as well regarding uh, willingness to host such a repository under uh, Denk's uh, uh, GitLab umbrella. So it need not be there. I mean, so. Uh, the the firmware need not be related to U-boot or anything. It's it's essentially any bootloader, Bearbox or um, MC boot, anything as such. So, uh, but we are essentially uh, looking for. Uh, uh, so what what this essentially provides us, if you were to host the firmware there, is you could use your common build infrastructure of different bootloaders, download the firmware from there, and essentially go about your build flow. Um, there's there's something uh, U-boot has has a tool called Binman which can do the packaging of the binaries and able to essentially use that. And since this is just one single firmware, it can be part of common build flow of across the distro. Distro, so so you have a way to um, make it distro friendly as well instead of adding support for each and every distributions out there, right? So uh, and of course, as I talked before, the clear clearer licensing and redistribution requirements that you know that comes with it okay so right moving on like what what are we what we are asking for the community is uh, do engage in the conversation on the boot you boot mailing list we are looking for um, more acts outside of ti from other companies who have similar problems so we can get uh, we are, we're, we're, so that it you know there is more uh, momentum behind this. Uh, if you have such firmware to be hosted, please point us and any other concerns and queries that you have so far uh, with respect to this uh, uh, such such a repository, right? So uh, uh, we haven't heard clearly a yes or no at present from other SOC vendors. So that's that's exactly what we want to know uh, and. The point of hosting can be under Denk Umbrella Life since they are volunteering for it, but we are open to you know host it anywhere else if there is a bigger uh, common repository that we can go for. Okay. All right. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, just just a poll if to just see if uh, how many. Or would be interested in such a repository. Uh, could you just use Linux firmware instead, instead of making a separate repository? But because I think uh, vendors already have the processes in, in place to put firmware there. Which is what exactly what we use in TI as well. Sorry. So we have a fork of Linux firmware. That's where we are hosting the firmware binaries. Um, the feedback we got was that anything to do with Linux directly makes sense to add in the Linux firmware. But some of the firmware entities that we are talking about are like security and glyph firmwares. And they get activated even before the Linux kernel starts up. And maybe something like um, in the ARM terminology, uh, the TFA talks to the security and glyph, but not your main Linux. So now that is kind of um, odd man out. What do you do at that point? Right? Uh, there are some system services that could be integrated. But overall, the feedback that we received is that for these boot critical firmware, Linux firmware may not be the place to host it. The other option we did consider was uh, FW update, um, because that's another scheme of uh, delivering firmware. That would make sense if you have a signed uh, binary deployment scheme, but not the host binaries that we are hosting here. So we do realize that openness is better. We would rather prefer that security firmware is provided as source but 
let's be a little pragmatic here, right? You have both these worlds exist. Uh, there is security by obscurity, no matter how much we don't like it, that still exists. There are products that are being manufactured out of that. Uh, how do we maintain some sort of consistency? Today, the story is a very fragmented story that we have. Anybody who's doing a distro build, um, you guys already know the pain. Right? Uh, we would like to propose this, and we cannot do that without the community support. Whoops. Oops. I didn't know you were going to throw it at me. Do I to speak here? OK, hi. Um, so uh, you mentioned Binman. Uh, it allows tools to be built. Mm -hmm. um, that are needed for vendors, um, blobs and stuff. It also, um, you know, provides a way to, to find those binaries. I think the thing that annoys me about building for a particular board is having to go and hunt for stuff. And I think I said this on the thread at one point, but really, if along with the repository, there needs to be a way to find the file. So I just want to type make okay. and all these binaries get built or downloaded or whatever uh, automatically. Otherwise, uh, it's just a, a guessing game. In fact, that was one of the biggest motivations that we had as well. Um, we have extensive, at least TI. Can you speak both both for, sorry. So we both work for TI. So uh, from TI's perspective, Binman was a crucial element in how we provide boot firmware, how we assemble these boot firmware to them. And what we realized is that we couldn't generalize the solution, like how Linux firmware repositories, right? You can have drivers that say firmware load in a predefined location. You couldn't do that in U-Boot because the source, the binaries where we allocated is very vendor specific, how we organize stuff. This provides us an option of structuring that. Bigger story for us is that this allows some sort of standardization uh, beyond U-Boot as well. We know bare boot exists. We know MCU boot exists. There are so many different bootloaders out there. Why don't we all collate together in a common structure? This allows us to do that. Any other questions? It's maybe going a bit too deep for this. <laughs> session but um, <clears throat> some of these firmwares you can actually build from source but it's convenient that uh, the vendor already provides provides a pre-built version um, how do you see the integration of having the option of either taking the uh, boot firmware source uh, I mean source which is binary or the uh, own build custom built uh, blob right so what we are proposing we asked, sorry my <laughs> What we are proposing is the similar set of rules that we are following for Linux firmware, uh, where we do permit certain firmwares that are uh, can be built, uh, but they may use vendor-specific tools, for example. In such cases, the binaries are hosted in Linux firmware. Right? Uh, what we are hoping is to mirror the same set of rules. Now, this is again open to conversation uh, in the mailing list, where we can propose these as part of the code of conduct rules and we can probably negotiate what's probably pragmatic for all of us. So. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's asking questions. Um, in Builtroot, uh, one of the not big, but uh, Somewhat issues we have with Linux firmware is that um, even if you need to get just a, a very small file from it, uh, you need to, to download or clone this, uh, this huge repository. Um, isn't there a risk to have the same issue that with boot firmware? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did bring this up on the U boot list as well, and that's where we need alignment as well, right? So, wanted to put because it's a bootloader, you may not be looking at megabytes worth of images. It's, it doesn't make sense at all at that point, right? So some sort of sanity in terms of file sizes as well. Uh, but, you know, there were arguments saying, why would we, why should we put such arbitrary constraint either? Because 
if it's required for boot, if it's a boot critical firmware, irrespective of the size, it should be possible to host in the repository. Uh, we'll probably end up with huge number of files and maybe variations for each boot modes. That's one more place where we may end up with quite a large number of files that, again, we'll have to you know understand and put some sort of sanity in terms of how many files uh, for a particular boot flow would be possible. But yeah, I agree that you know the size of the repository may 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 not be conducive conducive for yeah lighter build systems. So I would like to say that I really like the the approach and the plan. Uh, maybe a couple maybe concerns. Mm -hmm. um, first, Denk server is it really like other company server good place? Uh, what kind of you know security of that we will have? Um, I I think. Uh, like foundation servers are would be better probably if we can get to that. So maybe justification should be like this firmware makes Linux secure. So please help us place this in correct, uh, correct way. Yeah. My question is how you plan uh, to keep those binaries um, provable that they work? Because in the past I worked with some um, crypto engines. Uh, there were some binaries provided during the time of the patch upstreaming. But then when I check after a couple of years, those binaries were not available and whatever I found in some archives didn't work. So then the question is like, how you plan to make those components uh, like validated, I don't know, like verify that they work really? And this is why we kind of hooked on U-Boot as the baseline. So binaries that work with U-Boot was a original intent. Hence the linkage to the tanks. Um, but if you were to separate that out, right, we could put up a rule saying that there should at least be one open source bootloader that is supported and can show evidence of it before we accept that binary. That might be something that we could do. Uh, right now, we are kind of tying it to U boot, but there's no reason for us to tie that down. In fact, that may not be in our interest either. So. Two minutes left. Grant I think that just opens up another can of worms that we're going to have to deal with in that we don't have a robust testing program to go and build these firmwares out of U-Boot, test them on real platforms, uh, and then the next bit is you know LTS and actually, or actually having support for these so that they can be used in real products. Um, that sounds like a completely separate session to schedule. Very much true. And U-Boot, there has been some discussions in terms of how we manage LTS. Um, it all comes back to the same old questions that we all have challenges with LTS, resources, time, money. Yeah. Okay, just one question, last question from me. Uh, I am Grab My Tanner and uh, recently we were discussing some testing for core boot and open firmware. Are you considering uh, hosting the firmwares for testing purposes only or something like that? if they are provided properly, of course. Because sometimes uh, it will be much, much easier for developers to, to run tests without building the core boot or open firmware for, for, for just tests or something like that. That was not part of the initial consideration. Uh, we were thinking more, mostly from a production perspective. Ah, okay, okay. Um, but from test firmware's perspective, that might open up a um, different set of hosting challenges because of the variations that we may have to deal with. So, so you would be focusing mostly on production uh, filmers, uh, that's, not on, okay. That's our biggest problem that we have. The okay. fragmentation is so bad today. It is extremely unlikely that um, for multiple distros to have a consistent feel, uh, we are finding it very difficult at the moment. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, okay. I think that the time is out. Uh, thank you for your presentation thank you. and...